Al Estrada, a.k.a. The Chemist. Envy him, my friends, for he has been given the sight. For Al now carries a gift and a purpose to go forth and share it amongst others. You are now witnessing tranquility, happiness in its purest form, through the beautiful chaos in the streets, for the sight has shown Al the way guiding him to this coffee shop on the second floor. The taint of poisonous thoughts. Poor souls who are in dire need of salvation. Purple people yearning to be free. For Al is the only one who can give these people, purple people, the bliss that they so desperately desire. Al the chemist has found purpose. For he must give and make everything all better. It was when Amiko and Cody were becoming more than just friends. When Amiko thought that she was falling in love. When she and Cody first kissed after he had finally asked her out on a date. A couple of Cody's friends were throwing a party that night. And even though Amiko wasn't the kind of girl who was looking for a date or the partying type. Then again, she thought it'd be fun. Live a little with somebody she can trust. Well... Even though Amiko showed up to the party, a bit frustrated that Cody wasn't there, assuming that he was running late or something. That was when Amiko was approached by a guy who couldn't keep his eyes off of her. Of course, Amiko mentioned that she was waiting for her boyfriend, but that didn't stop him. The guy was very persistent. Even though Amiko was not interested, maybe she felt a little flattered didn't find any harm in it when he talked her into having one of the special drinks. But there was something about the way his friends was looking at her, which started to make Amiko feel uncomfortable. But you know, Amiko also did not want to be seen as the boring little Japanese girl who didn't know how to have fun or enjoy a good time. Even though Amiko is not used to alcohol, till this day she's convinced that they must have put something in her drink because the last thing she remembered was being carried up the stairs and seeing everyone laughing at her. And that's when Amiko fell into unconsciousness. It was like a bad dream when she would come to, like everything was unreal, blurry, having no recollection besides a few blurry images that would fade away. When Amiko was found outside, that was when she came to. The party was still going strong. Still no sign of Cody, Amiko having no idea what happened, or how she ended up outside, until the girl that found her gave her a pair of panties. Her panties. One of the guys who wanted to return them and thank Amiko for a good time. The next day, that was when Amiko got the pictures through email 
with a message for her to keep her mouth shut. Well, the faculty and her parents will be sent the same pictures and the video too. Which leaves the question, where the hell was Cody? He got mugged. The whole time, Cody was with the cops when he got jumped, tried calling Amiko as soon as he could, but she never answered. Probably because she was too busy getting raped. But got mugged? And didn't even bother coming to see her afterwards? Didn't know until after he saw the video? Kind of makes you wonder why Cody came here. That it took a video of Amiko getting raped for him to suddenly care? Not that it matters. Bullshit. This was all bullshit to Ryan. Amiko was not raped. She loved every minute of it. But Mr. Takahashi heard enough. He knows his daughter and knows when she's telling a lie. This boy defiled Amiko with his filthy ways, for he had hurt his daughter and as a father made his choice. Mr. Takahashi is now sick of listening to this American filth, for Ryan must now die. But before Mr. Takahashi was about to put Ryan out of his misery, he was stopped by Amiko. It's not her father's honor to kill this man. It should be Amiko who decides what should be done with him. That was when Mr. Takahashi lowered his blade, his anger turning into sadness. She's right. Ryan had enough of this. Last thing these people should be doing is putting someone on trial over a goddamn porno. These people are no different than the freaks outside. But just as soon as Ryan started to leave, that was when he was stopped by Natalie, literally knocking the wind out of Ryan when punching him in the stomach. No, Ryan is not going anywhere. As of right now, Natalie is done with him. I guess that's when Ryan finally admitted what he'd done. Just did not expect that it would go this far. Well, Cody, hope you're happy now. Now, what do you expect when bringing Ryan here? And I wonder how Cody thought that bringing Ryan here was going to make everything okay. No. No, Cody missed his chance on playing Amiko's knight in Shining Arbor. He was never there to stop it, and he was never there after it happened. And this is his way of doing something right? By bringing her rapist here? Cody, finally realizing the error of his ways. He just wanted to make things right. But, Amiko was right. It did happen. And now, with whatever's happening outside, once it goes away, Ryan will go back to America, and when he did, will be forgotten. Ryan will get away with it. Unless, Amiko chooses to do something about it. Well, friends, looks like Ryan here is about to have his own Gore Angels experience. Isn't that what we all wanted? Let's just say this is Amiko's way of thanking Ryan for his role in the creation of Gore Angels and how long she's yearned for this moment. Her rapist, who's now helpless and at her mercy, about to learn what Gore Angels is all about. Showing Ryan one of her sketches an idea of what's yet to come. It's a rapist who just had his dick chopped off, fried, and being fed to him. Oh, the fear within Ryan, and how Miko relished it. You know, Cody was right. These drawings didn't change anything. No matter how far Miko pushed the boundaries with this manga, she is still angry as she ever was. Which is why Miko is going to try something different. Instead of creating torture porn, Amiko's going to try something that Ryan enjoys doing, making movies. Even though this won't be the first castration live on the internet, knowing how there's a lot of strange people online these days, didn't take that long before our rapist pissed himself. So fucking pathetic. Ryan, still trying to plead for forgiveness. No. Everyone knows that Ryan is not sorry. Just sorry that he got caught, and sorry how it all came to this. So, here's the deal for Ryan. If he wants to keep his dick, 
What he's going to do is look straight into the camera and tell everyone online how he's a pathetic pervert and a rapist. Except, there's a problem with Amico's plan in regards to the internet and what's happening outside. It's not just Koja-san that's infected with a strange evil or a virus, or whatever it is. According to Amico's editor, it's also Tokyo, America, everywhere. It's everywhere in the world. People are literally killing and raping other people. What's happening in the world right now is nothing compared to Amico's gore angels. And that was when the internet was shut down. Well, looks like Amiko won't be able to make her little movie. So what is she going to do now? Is she still going to use that sword on Ryan? And that's when she heard something in the family lounge. Something is not right. Al the chemist is now here to make everything better. For he has come to show these people thy way. These brothers, these sisters, friends. For they are now family. This is not a disease. It's salvation. The final step of human evolution. And as Al took the blade to his arm, spilling his blood before his new family. Now is the time to eat Al's body. Come and drink his blood and join him in eternal death. Al noticing Amiko, sensing the rage, the sadness within this poor child, the immense pain she carries. Why fight the inevitable? Lower that blade and come and join the family, amigo. Let Al the chemist give you freedom. Let him relieve your suffering and show you the way to bliss. It wasn't until 20 minutes later when Amiko came back into the room. Her mother, father, Cody, Natalie. Amiko gave them what they all wanted. She gave him bliss. You know, Amiko was never going to use this blade on Ryan. She wants to, but she's not like him. Seeing how Ryan's right about everyone being the same, what's the point in keeping Ryan here? How's killing him going to make anything better? When the rules are taken away, we're all animals. Ryan was just being true to his nature. It's his world now. And when Amiko set Ryan free, immediately he ran from the building and out into the streets. Run, Ryan. Run, as fast as you can. Out into the world where everyone's driven to watch you suffer. To be part of their sadistic fantasy. Very soon, they'll catch up to you. Knowing that you can't hide. And that is the truth, isn't it? You can't hide. You can't escape. The only thing you can do is say no. Amiko's father is right. There is still honor. Just enough for Amiko to say no.